Hello? Hello, Roop's here. Hello, Gray, I'm here. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Sylvie's here. Good morning, Commissioner, or Mr. Chairman. morning. Was that Commissioner Holzman? Uh, that would be correct. Any other commissioners on the phone yet? Roots here. Any commissioner? Good morning. You can go up to my room if you want, Madison, and lay down. Kenny's on. Good morning, Commissioner. Good morning, Mr. Chairman.
Has Commissioner Coleman joined? Made a Coleman this year. Right. <clears throat> Good morning, Commissioner. That brings us all into attendance. So we will go ahead and convene the agenda meeting. Uh, first order of business is to approve the minutes from July 1st, the open minutes from July 1st, 2020. You all have seen those. Any additions or corrections? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving the open minutes for July 1st, 2020, say aye. 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 Those minutes are approved five to zero. Um, we also had closed session that day. So next uh, order of business is to approve the closed minutes for July 1st. You all have seen those. Any additions or corrections? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving the closed minutes from July 1st, 2020, say aye. 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 Those minutes are also approved five to zero. Uh, we have five tariffs and new orders today and one case discussion. So. Uh, we'll go ahead and start with the tariffs and new orders. Um, first up is file number WT2020-0353. This is in the matter of Missouri American Water Company's proposed tariff sheet filing. Uh, this order suspends Missouri Americans' tariff sheets concerning the treatment of certain customer service lines in St. Louis County. Um, late on Monday, public counsel submitted a response to staff's recommendation. And while they didn't specifically oppose uh, the proposed tariff sheets, they did point out a potential discrepancy with, low, with how private fire lines and master service lines are owned and maintained in other parts of the company's service territory, specifically St. Joe and Joplin. Um, so this order will suspend the tariff sheets until August 21st so that we can give staff and Missouri American an opportunity to reply and address the issues uh, brought up by OPC. So with that, I recommend that we support the order as drafted version two. Commissioner Kenny. I'm in support of the order as well. Commissioner Roop. I am in support. Commissioner Coleman. I support the order. And Commissioner Holzman. I support the order. All right, all those in favor of approving the order as drafted version two say aye. 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 That order is approved five to zero. Next up is file number WR2020-0344. This is in the matter of Missouri American Water Company's request for authority to implement general rate increase uh, for water and sewer service provided in the Missouri service areas. Uh, Missouri American has filed tariff sheets for a general rate case on July 30th. Uh, this order provides notice of a contested case and suspends the water and sewer tariff sheets until May 27th of 2021. Um, I recommend that we support the order and notice uh, as drafted version two. Commissioner Kinney. I am in support as well. Commissioner Roop. I am supporting the order. Commissioner Coleman. I'm in support. And Commissioner Holzman. I support the order. All right. All those in favor of approving the order and notice uh, as drafted version two say aye. 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 Uh, aye. The, they are approved five to zero. Next up, file number GO2021-0002. Uh, uh, this is in the matter of Spire Missouri Inc. Uh, DBA Spire's motion for expedited treatment of its low-income tariff filing to expand its low-income energy affordability program. Spire filed tariff sheets to revise their low-income tariff uh, sheets that are aimed at offering assistance to customers impacted by COVID. Um, they're also requesting expedited treatment to allow the tariff sheets to go into effect on July 18th. 
Under the current tariff, only customers within the 136 to 185% of federal poverty level are eligible for the funds. Um, Spire's wanting to expand that program for customers who earn up to 135, uh, 135% of the poverty level since they're no longer eligible for LIHEAP assistance uh, for their natural gas bills. So Spire wants to extend their assistance program to last until September 30th. Um, they've indicated that they discussed these changes with both staff and the public council, and neither have opposed the request. So this order grants the request for expedited treatment and approves the revised tariff sheets to go into effect on July 18th. So I recommend that we support the order as drafted version one. Commissioner Kenny? I am in support of the order. Commissioner Roop? I am supporting the order. Commissioner Coleman? I support the order. And Commissioner Holzman? I also support the order. All right, all those in favor of approving the order as drafted version one say aye. 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 That order is approved five to zero. Next up, file number GM 2020. 0292. This is in the matter of the application of Spire Missouri Inc. to transfer certain assets to St. Louis University. Um, so this order also deals with a request from Spire. Um, Spire East wants an approval to sell some of its assets to St. Louis University. And in their amended application, the company identifies portions of their gas distribution system that serves uh, SLU's campus that they would uh, like to sell. Um, this includes 5,100 feet of pipeline. So once the five segments of main and pipeline are transferred, SLU will own their own distribution system and buy gas at the wholesale rate. None of the assets uh, to be transferred were included in the company's ISRIS. Um, their Spire is required by statute to obtain our approval before selling any part of its system. Um, Spires indicated that a prior bill of sale with SLU is considered invalid, and they've included uh, with this application a revised bill of sale um, that conditions the sale on uh, this commission's approval. Uh, it should be noted that staff's safety uh, engineering department uh, shared safety and reporting regulations with SLU so that they will know what their obligations are uh, once they are responsible for the system's maintenance. Uh, staff reviewed the request and recommended that the application be granted subject to some conditions, uh, including that Spire repair a link at uh, Lindell Boulevard um, if that's part of the assets to be transferred, and uh, that uh, they investigate and correct a deficient cathodic protection that staff identified. Um, so I don't believe that this transfer is detrimental to the public interest, uh, subject to the conditions that staff has proposed, and I support this order granting the amended application uh, version one. Commissioner Kinney? I'm in support. Commissioner Roop? I am in support as well. Commissioner Coleman? I concur. And Commissioner Holzman? I support the order. All right. All those in favor of approving the orders drafted version one say aye. 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 The order is approved five to zero. Final order today is uh, file number EO 2018-0211. This is in the matter of Union Electric Company, DBA, Amher, Missouri's third filing to implement regulatory changes and furtherance of energy efficiency as allowed by MIA. Um, Amherst, Missouri filed uh, revisions to their technical resource manual um, and deemed savings table. So the company says that the changes to their TRM will support small business um, and help the, to re-engage business customers. Amherst is proposing these changes to address uh, changes in Missouri's uh, because of the stay-at-home orders. Uh, the company shared the proposed changes with staff who they indicate support the changes. Um, Ameren is requesting the changes to be approved to go into effect on August 1st, uh, since they state that it will help business customers in their MIA programs. Um, I support the order approving the revised TRM and deemed savings table and recommend that we approve the order as drafted version one. Commissioner Kinney? I'm in support of the order. Commissioner Root? Aye. I'm in support. Commissioner Coleman? I support the order. And Commissioner Holzman. I support the order. All right. All those in favor of approving the order as drafted version one say aye. 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 The order is approved five to zero. All right. That concludes uh, reports and orders. Um, I believe somebody, if 
somebody is creating a feedback loop if we could get people muted unless you're speaking. Thank you. Um, all right, so next up is case discussion. Um, we have one case discussion today, file number WA2019-0299. This is Confluence Rivers Utility Operating Company, um, post hearing case discussion. Judge Hatcher, are you on the line? Yes, Mr. Chairman. All right, would you like to uh, set this up for us? Yes, uh, this is a contested case involving Confluence Rivers purchase of Port Perry's water and sewer systems. The lot owners, which are current customers of Port Perry, intervened in the case and objected to the sale. The standard uh, to transfer private property, which also is a regulated utility, is that the commission must approve the transfer unless it is detrimental to the public interest. Staff found no detriments to the public interest and recommended approval of the transaction subject to a list of 11 conditions and those conditions Confluence Rivers accepted. The lot owners raised several objections which are discussed in the memo. Uh, their main argument is that the rates will be unjustly higher under Confluence ownership, but they raised several other detriment arguments as well. Mr. Chairman? Right, thank you. So the first question uh, for determination in the memo is, is the sale of Port Perry detrimental to the public interest? Um, I don't think that the sale is detrimental to the public interest. Um, I think, you know, obviously this case might draw some comparisons to the Osage case, which we heard recently, um, which received some vocal opposition from the customers. But I, but I think that the, in that case, the receivership and bankruptcy with the stocking horse bidder and auction created a situation um, and concerns I had there that I don't have here. Um, in this case, uh, we don't have um, experienced utility systems as potential uh, alternative buyers. So I was comfortable um, with the testimony of Mr. Cox explaining how the purchase of Port Perry without an acquisition premium still makes economic sense uh, for confluence with the asset purchase. So. I don't share, I, I guess the short of it is I don't share the, the same concerns I had in the previous case, um, and I don't think that the sale is detrimental to the public interest. Uh, Commissioner Kinney, on question one. Uh, yeah, Confluence is a, an experienced operator. Uh, we've dealt with them previously. I think they, uh, they, this will definitely not be to the detriment of the public. Okay, Commissioner Roop. Yeah, I agree. I don't see any detriment to the public interest uh, if this goes through. Okay, Commissioner Coleman. I agree, Mr. Chairman. I don't think the sale of Port Perry to Confluence is detrimental to the public. Okay, and Commissioner Holzman. Um, I also do not believe it is detrimental. However, during the um, hearing, Mr. Cox did state that they were they had no intentions of trying to have any ancillary recovery or uh, figuring out ways to make the difference in the acquisition premium up through other means. And I would say that uh, that statement is, uh, you know, holds water in terms of the detrimentalness and will be uh, applied when all of this gets taken out in the rate case in the future. Okay. So it sounds like we're all unified on question one, Judge. Um, question two. If the commission approves the sale, what, if any, conditions should it impose? Um, so here, just broadly, without going through every condition individually, I'll just say that I support the conditions recommended from staff and confluence, um, but I don't support the conditions supported uh, proposed by the landowners. Um, well, I think that all the parties agreed on the $77,936 net book value for both the water and sewer assets of December 31st, 2019. Um, I don't think it's appropriate for the commission in this case to state what the starting rate base will be uh, for any time after that date, because we really don't know what improvements, if any, have been made after December 31st, 2019. So when staff reviews the records in a future rate case, I would expect them to perform a review and make a recommendation as to the rate base at that time. And uh, just like any party in a future rate case can always make recommendations and address concerns as to the prudency. Uh, so I don't want to prejudge that issue by setting that, uh, setting that rate base today. Um, 
I do think uh, that the other conditions proposed by the lot owners are inappropriate because they appear to overstep into the management decisions uh, that Confluence is entitled to make. And um, that's not really the role of this commission to make those decisions. So in short, I support uh, staff and um, Confluence recommendations. I do not support the lot owner recommendations. Commissioner Kinney. Uh, first off, Mr. Chairman, I agree with you wholeheartedly on every condition, um, and I I couldn't have said it any better. Um, I know getting a lot of problems, especially with B and C, owners, especially on B and C with the lot owners if we allowed that to go through. So um, okay, I just concur with uh, your recommendation. Okay, Commissioner Root. Yeah, I, I agree with uh, you and uh, um, Commissioner Kenny. I, I do not support any of the lot owners' um, uh, um, conditions. Okay, Commissioner Coleman. I am in support of uh, the statements that have been put forth so far, um, and suggest we impose all the conditions to what staff and confluence agree on. Okay, and Commissioner Holzman. I support the chairman's position. However, I would say that. On the lot owners uh, condition number C or letter C, uh, you know, and typically having an advisory board that is allowed input is not something that I would just inherently oppose. Uh, having it be predicated on uh, the, the folks being selected, being approved by the lot owners and OPC, I think is probably a step too far. Uh, but in general, an advisory, a, a Consumer advisory board in the future is not something that I would necessarily oppose. I know it's not standard practice. So for those reasons, I'll, I'll support the chairman's position of supporting staff and not supporting the lot owner's conditions, but with that caveat. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so I think that gives clear direction on question two. Um, finally, uh, do they meet, does Confluence meet the requirements for a CCN? I mean, yes, they, in my opinion, they meet the tartan factors. I mean, there is a need for the service. Um, as Commissioner Kinney stated, Confluence has experience and the financial ability to provide the service. Um, and since there's not an acquisition premium and the net book value and depreciation levels have been identified, I think that their proposal is economically feasible. Um, so I, I, with that, you know, I, I think it's in the public interest to, to grant the CCN. Uh, Commissioner Kinney. Uh, yes, they do meet the requirement. Commissioner Roop. They meet the requirement. Commissioner Coleman. I agree. Yes, they meet the requirement. And Commissioner Holzman. That's for the chairman's position. Okay. All right, Judge, that uh, looks like we have clear direction on all of these questions. Um, is there anything else we needed to discuss on this? No, thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right, thank you for that. Um, so that concludes our case discussion. We've done tariffs in new order, so all that's left is scheduling. Um, today, um, after agenda, we will resume the evidentiary hearing in EC 2020-0183. That's Feckin v. Empire, um, Judge Graham via WebEx. Thursday, July 9th. Um, there's a local public hearing in uh, WR 2020-0264. That's Raytown Water Company's request for annual operating revenue increase. That's at 12.15 uh, p.m. via WebEx with Judge Jacobs. Tuesday the 14th, local public hearing in WR 2020-0275. That's Elm Hills Utility Operating Company, Inc.'s request for a water rate increase at 6 p.m. via WebEx with Judge Hatcher. Wednesday, July 15th, agenda at 10.15 a.m. Um, Monday the 20th through Wednesday the 22nd, just remind everyone, is NARUC's uh, Summer 2020 Policy Summit, which will be handled virtually this year. Um, on Wednesday the 22nd, we also have agenda at 10.15 a.m. Uh, Friday the 24th, we have an evidentiary hearing in GC 2020-0201. That's Claude Scott v. Spire at 10.30 a.m. We're going to plan to do that hearing via WebEx uh, with Judge Jacobs. Monday, the 27th, evidentiary hearing in MC 2020-0135. Uh, that's the PSC versus Brune Mobile Home Service Sales at 9 a.m. Also going to plan that via WebEx uh, with Judge Graham. Wednesday, July 29th, agenda at 10.15. Wednesday, August 5th, 
agenda at 10 15. Um, Wednesday, August 5th through Thursday, August 6th, we do have an evidentiary hearing in TC 2020 0333. That's Socket Telecom LLC v. CenturyLink. That's uh, at 9 a.m., currently scheduled for room 310 uh, with Judge DePel presiding. Um, and then Wednesday, August 12th, agenda at 10.15 a.m. That gets us out through August 12th. Any um, questions, requests, concerns regarding scheduling through the 12th? All right, hearing none, uh, we have no other business coming before the body. So with that, uh, we will be adjourned. Thank you, commissioners. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Thank you.